Hi and welcome to video 17 on this Unit 4 Topic 2 Specialist Mathematics topic um, and this is the first part Differential Equations and now we're looking at slope fields. So a slope field is something that I think is for sure going to come up in the external exam maybe in the uh, multiple choice section, maybe in the short response, maybe in both it'll be worth a couple of marks somewhere. Um, so let's have a look at slope fields. Slope fields main purpose is to allow us to represent and also investigate uh, differential equations that maybe aren't that solvable. So we already know how to solve differential equations of a couple of forms, to y dx equals f of x, that's our common one, we've been doing that one for a year. Uh, this one we investigated earlier, where it's a function of y, and we've also looked at this case of it being separable. So it's f of x times g of y, so we can separate the y and the x easily. Um, so this is all good and well, but what about this case here? What about if it's a function of x and y where it's not separable? What does that look like? How do we solve that? And actually it's quite difficult to solve. Uh, there are some techniques, but you don't need to know them for this, uh, this course and this syllabus. But you do need to be able to represent these as a slope field and investigate that slope field. So to y dx is a gradient, x and y is a coordinate on the plane. So here's a slope field. And this comes straight off Desmos. There is a program on Desmos or somebody's written up a program to help you represent slope fields. It's worth playing around with. Um, so given that dy dx is a gradient, if we know a coordinate x and y, then we can find dy dx at that point. So let's take this example here. dy dx is equal to 2x over y. So I'm saying let's take the coordinate 1, 1. 2 times 1 over 1 is 2. So at the coordinate 1, 1, the gradient is 2. And this is that point representing the gradient equals 2. You can see it's reasonably steep. Now the point above it at, um, so that's not, yeah, that's 1, 1, sorry. And the point above it at 1, 2 is not as steep. And let's look at what's happening here. 1, 2 gives us 2 over 2, which is a gradient of 1 rather than 2. So you can see it flattens out. And it continues to flatten it out because y is increasing. And so our denominator is increasing, but x is staying the same. And so you can see the gradient decreasing over time. And what this also does is visually we get a nice representation of what's going on here. Um, first of all, we get this sort of maybe parabolic shape here, but we also get this shape here, which kind of leads us to the idea of rectangular hyperbolas there. Um, there's something going on here that we could play with. We've got 2x over y, which also indicates something to do with square root functions, rectangular hyperbolas. Um, and so we get some nice interesting features that we can play with if need be. Now let's move on and look at drawing them. So example one, on the grid provided, sketch the following slope field, to y dx equals x plus y. x plus y is not solvable, so it's an important one to be able to do. Uh, so I'm going to just start by building up some trends and sketching those trends. So for example, the first trend I know is that if x and y are opposite to each other, so say negative 3 and 3, when I add them together I get 0, and that's flat, so that's 0. Negative 2 and 2 is 0, so that's got a gradient of 0. Uh, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, 0 plus 0. So you can start to build an idea by playing around with the things that we expect to happen. Um, so the next one is, what if I add where the y is 1 bigger than that x? So if I've got y is 3 and x is negative 2, that gives me a gradient of 1, which looks like this. A gradient of 1, gradient of 1, gradient of 1, gradient of 1, gradient of 1. And what if I've got y is equal to... Um, 3, but x is equal to negative 1. Now I've got a gradient of 2. So it's a bit steeper again. And 2 here, and 2 here. So you can see there's this diagonal pattern going on. And if it's 3 and 0, I get 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3. Now I'm, I'm going pretty steep now. It's, it's going to get non-recognizable in a minute, but basically this is a gradient of 4, which is really quite steep. And here's a gradient of 5. And then Here's my best attempt at a gradient of 6, which basically looks vertical. Now, I also get this reciprocal. So on the other side, uh, 2 and negative 3 gives me a gradient of negative 1. So I get this sort of shape here. So I'll do that in orange again, and then I'll go back to purple, and then I'll just trace the colors. It's negative 2, and light blue is negative 3, and then I get pink, negative 4, and then blue, 
negative 5, and then at red, negative 6, which is all but per vertical by then. Now, this is interesting because I do get one really interesting case where this orange one looks like it might actually be a straight line answer. And it works out that it is a straight line answer. Every point on that straight line gives the same gradient negative 1. So that's one solution to our differential equation. But we get a whole bunch of other solutions as well. So we get solutions that come down, they flatten out, and then they curl back up. You can see the shape that's going on here. Um, or maybe this one that's on the inside will be another solution. And these are all families of curves. Um, here we get these solutions that run down there, like that. And these families occur, if we solve the differential equation, we could get it down to be y equals some function of x comma y, or maybe if we're lucky, some function of x. But if we manage to solve that, then we've done it by integration, which means we end up with a plus c somehow. And these different black curves here, and including that orange one, they represent different plus c values. So when we solve a differential equation for the general solution and get a plus c, you might remember we called that a family of solutions. Well, a differential equation can be written or drawn as a slope field, and that represents the general shape of a family of solutions. So let's have a look at another one. And in this case, that is indeed separable. So we could actually solve this one if we wanted to. Um, and it says here in this example, solve the differential equation and compare to your general solution to your slope field. So my slope field, first of all, I'll start with orange. And let's do the ones that we know. And the ones that we know are that x squared y, if x or y is 0, we get 0. So let's plot those in orange. Here we go. This is the one where y is 0. And these are the ones where x are 0. Okay, then in green, I'm going to investigate um, a little bit closer, see what's happening if I've got um, x squared y. Well, if I've got y equals 1, um, which is this vertical line here, well, then x squared is, sorry, which is um, this horizontal line here, my apologies. x squared is 1 squared times 1 is 1. 2 squared times 1 is 4. 3 squared times 1 is really steep. And it's only getting 1. Negative 1 squared is also 1, so I get 1. 4, and that's 9, really steep. I'll do the next one in purple. Um, two, so y is 2, 2 times 1 squared is 2, and then I get 8, and then I get 18, um, and I get it again, 2, 8, and 18, and then I'll do the next one in light blue. Uh, this time I get 3, and something ridiculous, 12, and here, what's that, 27. So 3, 12, 27. It's hard to represent the really steep ones. Doing them in reverse, though, um, I get x squared y, but y is negative this time, so my gradient is negative. But I get the same values, so it's just negative 1, negative 4, negative 9. And then in purple, oh, I haven't finished all the greens. Negative, negative, negative. I get the same here in purple. That, 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 that. And so you can see the shape forming as we go. This is really steep, excessively steep, massively steep. So my brilliant words there. Um, but there's my shape and a bit of an understanding of my shape. And so if I was to solve this differential equation, and you're welcome to go ahead and do it, um, basically I get 1 over y on this side, x squared on that side, which gives me log y equals 1 third x cubed plus c, and so that gives me y is equal to a e to the one third x cubed. And it turns out that that function looks a little bit like this function, which I drew earlier. Um, and you can see what's happening here. It's giving us an asymptote along with that gradient zero. But then it does pop up, as you can see, the gradient follows. But then it flattens out as it gets to here, and then it pops up again. So it's following those slope curves that are being provided. It's giving, they're giving us information about the shape of the graph and what's happening. Um, so there we go. That's example one, part A and B. And we're going to have a look at example two, which is a multiple choice, a pretty common multiple choice. Considering the slope field shown, which differential equation could it represent? So this is a bit of analysis now. So let's have a look at what we've got. We've got some really good information, and I'm going to start with this piece here. When y is equal to 1, I get a gradient of 0 the whole time. 
Now this already solves a problem, but let's talk about something really quickly. Notice here that they are all the same gradient, and they are all the same gradient, and they're all the same gradient, and they're all the same gradient, but they differ to each other. So in those cases, I change y, but if I change x from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, the gradient doesn't change. And that tells me that dy dx is a function of y, but not x. It's not related to x, which automatically crosses out a and c, because the gradient is not related to those slopes. So instead, it's either b or d. And because the gradient is 0 when y is 1, d is the correct answer. That slope field is represented by function d. Now it says sketch the particular solution to the differential equation that passes through 1, 2. So this does involve a bit of work, um, but it's a nice differential equation, so it works. I've got dy dx is equal to y minus 1 over 2, and therefore um, 2 over y minus 1 dy, that's really not a y, equals 1 dx. I can integrate both sides of this, and it gives me 2 log y minus 1 equals x plus c, uh, which gives me y minus 1 is equal to e to the half x plus c, divided by 2, doesn't affect the c, and that gives me y is equal to a e to the half x and the plus c has already gone out the front, but I've got a plus 1 there. Um, so that's the one that goes through there. It's given me a plus 1. a e to the half x is an exponential function, and it's not x cubed this time, so there's nothing funny about it. Because it's given me that plus 1, it's telling me that it goes through this point, which is 1, 2, and it's an exponential. So it sort of flows, and you can see what's happened there. And it's following those gradients. It's, it's almost like wind currents, like you're looking at a weather chart and they're the wind currents and the wind sort of pushing that function in different directions. Um, so we could do this by solving or, depending on the question, is this started multiple choice? The second part of the multiple choice might be um, which of these functions is appropriate for the differential equation above and you would have some options or something like that. So you could do it by just looking at the shape of the slope field or you could do it by solving. So that's um, video 17. Hopefully it's helped you with the introduction of slope fields. All the best.